Yeah, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. To tell the full story, I'm gonna need to go back to the beginning of the year. On January 3rd, this incredibly photogenic tornado would occur in central Illinois. This footage here was captured by mad scientist YouTuber Styro Pyro. This guy dominates central oh, Illinois. And while I wish I could have been there, I live a thousand miles away, so there was no chance I was going to see this. I am basically in this tornado. This year continued to be way above average for tornadoes, but in areas with lots of trees and simply too far from where I live. But that would all change in late February. first chase of the season began in the beautiful town of Hollis, Oklahoma. The locals were extremely concerned about the upcoming severe weather. I eventually ended up in Mangum, Oklahoma. That is not looking good. I was directly in the path of a strong embedded supercell with nearly constant lightning and some of the most ominous tornado sirens I've ever experienced. However, the true beauty and structure of the storm is revealed in the time lapse. If there was going to be a tornado, it would have happened in this area here, but all I got were straight line winds. Why do I do this? This isn't fun. This chase was really frustrating, but it was also early in the season. There would be many more opportunities. Sure enough, on March 31st, computer models were hinting at an extremely high-end setup along the entire length of the Mississippi River. Oh yeah, and another day too. That was enough to get me to make the long trek out to the Midwest. And while I spent the night in Iowa, the Storm Prediction Center issued a rare double high risk where two separate targets had a 30% chance of tornadoes. I would be chasing the northern target, specifically the Illinois side of the Mississippi River. And this would end up being my first big mistake. The day would start with this tornado-worn storm near Monmouth, Illinois. I don't think that's doing it. I'm going to cut east and north just to stick with it. It's good. Here, let me snap a quick photo. I could see rotation at the base of the storm, but it just didn't look strong enough to produce a tornado. Let me take a photo for you guys. It was clear the storm was not going to do it. Right around this time, other chasers were posting images of a storm in Iowa. These were some of the most photogenic tornadoes I've ever seen. 
It's really hard to describe how much it hurts missing something like this, especially knowing I could have been there. Out of pure frustration, I rage quit on the day, missing even more tornadoes in Illinois. This day left me with an unhealthy sense of desperation. I chased the one area that didn't produce tornadoes on a historic, high-risk day. My next opportunity to redeem myself would come on April 4th, the day of the accident. Uh-oh! It's Shanti. Hey, Shanti! It's like, where's the storm? Oh, they're coming, don't worry. Oh, good girl. Oh my God. Oh, there we go. Wow. After initially targeting southeast Iowa, I crossed the Mississippi River into western Illinois, where a rapidly organizing supercell was taking shape. The chase started out as a relaxing lightning and structure chase, not a tornado chase. Oh, wow. Unbelievable. I captured some of my best lightning bolts to date. Let me get another one. Got so many good bolts. Big time supercell. Big, 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 big time supercell. This gigantic supercell is not normal for Illinois. A storm like this would normally occur out west in the Great Plains. Huge, huge supercell. I don't think that's gonna produce a tornado, but it's a big supercell. For some reason, I was underestimating this storm, thinking it was just gonna have structure and lightning. And hail. All right, here comes the hail. Oh my God. This storm was gorgeous, but it was also moving at around 50 miles per hour, so I couldn't stop to record. I continued driving northeast, constantly looking over my shoulder, trying to see if a tornado had formed. The base of the storm kept getting lower and lower. I think right around this time is when it started to produce tornadoes. I'm pretty sure this is a tornado here. You can see the lowered wall cloud with ground circulation underneath. I continued to try and stay in front of the storm. However, the road options were severely limited and the storm just kept getting closer and closer. Eventually, I was swallowed by the core of the storm where golf ball sized hail was pelting my car. Because of the hail, I had to slow down Otherwise, I was gonna lose my windshield. And I really didn't want that, which is pretty ironic considering what happened soon after. I would drive south out of the hail core and be greeted by one of the most incredible things I have ever seen in my life. A sculpted mothership supercell with a rotating wall cloud that was directly in front of me. Initially, I wasn't able to confirm ground circulation, but soon it became apparent. This was definitely a tornado. This, this is definitely a tornado. And that's where my video began. The tornado would briefly condense all the way to the ground, meaning it was showing signs of intensification. Wow, look at this thing! Dude! Dude! It's coming right at us! Yeah, this is! Oh Holy shit! We're good, we're good, we got time! Wow! This thing is strong! The tornado was rapidly growing in size. All right, we gotta move. Gotta move, gotta move, gotta move. Oh my God. Oh my God. Where the f is my phone? Oh my God. 
All right, this thing's right here. I knew I was in a bad spot, but I was mesmerized by the tornado and ended up waiting way too long. Oh, what? All right, this thing's real f***ing close. I tried to keep my cool, but I still had a ton of adrenaline. All right, we gotta move. We gotta move. We gotta f***ing move. At this moment, the tornado was directly to my south and was moving northeast at about 50 miles per hour. The safe thing to do in this situation would have been to go away from the tornado, which was either go north, go west, or even stay put. For some reason, I was still under the impression that I could beat the tornado, and I made probably the worst decision I've ever made since I started storm chasing. I tried to race the tornado to the east. Right around this time, you can see my headlights on another Storm Chasers video as I was frantically driving east. You also can see in his video the large rain-wrapped tornado just to my south moments before the accident. This right here was probably my last potential moment of escape. I could have turned north on this road, but because I was going so fast, I missed the turn. And then I got to this next stop sign, where I became aware of the horrible situation I was in. Oh my God! The tornado was less than a quarter mile to my southwest and there were speeding cars right in front of it, preventing me from turning left. The tornado also appeared like it would pass further to my south, so I made the split second decision to turn around to try to get behind the tornado. And then it happened. All right, we're going back. We're going back. After my camera cut out, the vehicle rolled for a solid 20 seconds. It felt like a movie, a sick movie that was real. I was hit. I made a serious, serious mistake. I... That's it. The next day I would revisit the scene, and that's when it hit me. I had lost my one and only vehicle. I've had this car since I got into storm chasing. It may have been an ugly duckling, but it was reliable, and I loved it. In the end, this vehicle gave its life for me. I escaped with no injuries, and I owe it to this car. I would survey the area of the accident. This tornado was rated EF3 with a maximum wind speed of 160 miles per hour. I'm lucky to be alive. And while it sucks that I lost my car, the true victims of the storm were the locals who didn't choose to be in its path. I also want to let you guys know that because of the accident, I'm seriously rethinking the way I storm chase. I'm going to be changing my channel name from High Risk Chris to Low Risk Chris.